Hello everyone. It's Thursday, a day late on our usual Coyotes chat, but obviously there was a lot going on yesterday and that will probably dictate uh, the bulk of our conversation today. Um, so we have a lot of questions to get to. Obviously the Coyotes are in action tonight hosting Montreal before they go uh, on an East Coast trip for four games leaving tomorrow. So um, an important opportunity tonight obviously to grab some points before a long road trip. So we have lots of questions to get to today. Obviously a lot surrounding the addition of ERAT and the trade deadline. I think we have a couple duplicates, so I'm going to try and get through uh, as many as we can and answer as many as I can, um, maybe by packaging a couple of these questions together. Um, first question comes from Bob. What other players was uh, General Manager Don Maloney and the Coyotes making a serious run at? I think we have a couple other questions um, about who else they they might have been going going for or targeting. Um, let me see if we have any other ones and then we can uh, kind of get rid of all those ones. Wrestling is Real wants to know um, that they were in on many deals. Would you know which ones? So I think a lot of people, yeah, are trying to say, you know, what else were they trying to receive yesterday? And obviously after adding Erat on Tuesday, they really went into Wednesday with kind of a clean slate in terms of adding another forward and another defenseman, but but really going for it. They were they were in, in the bidding war for a rental, and that was something that is unusual for the team in recent years. Uh, you know, when they didn't have ownership the past few years, it really had to be, everything had to be dollar for dollar. They wouldn't add rentals um, because they really just needed to be very budget conscious and, and keep players and retain players with term. But that was different this year. They had ownership in place, obviously, and they went to the owners excuse me, and got approval uh, to, add, to add a rental if needed. Um, Alice Hemsky was someone who was definitely on their radar, obviously another check. Um, he probably would have been the one to slot into the hands of Robata line and they felt that they had more flexibility with Erat to shift him around the lineup. Hemsky obviously went to Ottawa for a pair of picks, a third and a fifth I believe. Um, and then there's Thomas Vanek who was probably one of the last dominoes to fall but one of the biggest names out there. And I think that's probably surprising that they were in that conversation. But when you look at the price tag and what he ended up going for, um, you know, a pick and a player, it really you know, makes sense that the Coyotes were involved in that discussion. Um, the price tag on a player like Vanek a week ago was a first a second and and a player, a prospect or a player, and that obviously dropped to now second round picks, you know, uh, you know, minor roster players, which he ended up going for, and and that pushed the Coyotes into that conversation. In the end, though, they didn't want to mortgage the future for a short term solution. Obviously, there is the possibility. With the UFA, a rental, you don't sign them. They're just here for the push. Um, but they felt that multiple picks, even multiple second-round picks, which we saw in some of the other deals, was just too expensive. Um, you know, we look at, I think, looking forward even into this drop, they don't have a lot of mid-round picks, the Coyotes. I think, believe they have a couple of sevens. Um, now, obviously, two seconds as well. Um, but fifth and sixth round picks, um, you know, they, they didn't, I don't think they had that much to deal from. And they just felt that moving forward, they really need to pay a lot of attention to their drafting, to developing players. And by giving these picks away, they won't have that player developing in their system. They won't be able to tap into that player down the road. So as much as you know, Vanek would have been a great short-term boost. They felt that it was too much of a price tag down the road, um, you know, to have a guy who, who might not sign with you. So let's move on to our next question. Uh, Sunny writes: The addition of Martin Erat should help one of the forward lines, but what about the other forwards? When are they going to step up and take the pressure off Mike Smith and the D? Bodker, Ribeiro, and Moss have done absolutely nothing for weeks. I think Big Sinet should be in the lineup every night on fourth line. He brings energy to the team and the crowd. So it brings up a good point that we're getting into the time of the season that everyone has a responsibility and everybody needs to deliver on it. Uh, Erat coming in should ease some of the offensive burden. You know, he is a top six forward. As far as tonight, we don't know who he's going to be, um, you know, who's going to be a centerman, but we know he's going to start with Rudy Verbata, obviously. Hansel is doubtful for tonight, so if he plays, 
doesn't sound like it. Um, that's your line. But I think we could see him with Ribeiro tonight, and I think that would be a good fit. They have a little bit of familiarity last year in Washington, and it's a playmaker and a, two guys that like to be around the net on his wingers. But, it, you know, Sonny says there has to be other people. It can't be Mike Smith every night. Obviously, he had a shutout Tuesday against Vancouver. That's probably not the expectation every night. Bodker, I think, has been around the puck a lot lately. It's just getting that goal, getting that results, and it's going to take everyone the rest of the way. You mentioned Bissonnette. The fourth line has been doing a quality job lately. It makes it easier for the Coyotes to roll four lines and keep everyone going. Um, but, you know, the addition of Erat, I think, can be an injection, um, you know, overall. I think just having one little tweak, one little change, and having that confidence from management that they believe this team is still a playoff a playoff team can really revitalize everyone. So maybe we can, you know, even though he's only going to play with two guys, maybe there is a trickle-down effect from the Erat addition, and maybe that's what gets everybody going. Um... Erat RS. Will one player Erat really help this sinking franchise? Well, I, I don't know if they're sinking yet. They're only one point out of a playoff spot. But that is the fair question. Is the addition of Erat enough? And we're going to see. It just felt, though, in these last few weeks, something had to change. This team needed some type of tweak to feel better about themselves, to get help, to get offensive help. And, you know, right now it looks like he's a good fit. He's a good fit for that line to fill out that winger spot that there's been a whole next to Verbata and Hansel the last few years. Is he enough to get this team into the playoffs? I'm not sure. Would a Vanek have helped do that? Would Matt maybe have then put them over the top? It's hard to deny that skill level. That would definitely help. So I, I think it's going to take a little bit of time to decide, you know, is this the right fit? Is this the right boost and motivation that the group needs? And if it's not, you know, they really have to go back to Don Maloney wondering if he should have made an extra deal at the deadline to really prop this team up for a serious, you know, playoff berth and, and potentially a playoff run. And if this doesn't happen, we could see some changes in the offseason. Um, and that kind of goes into this next question that I believe that that we had. We want the cup now. GM DM's comments uh, that if we don't make the playoffs, we're going to do something different around here. That was the quote. How drastic would the changes be in the offseason if we don't make the playoffs or we do very well in them? Can you see some trades for the big names that will finally give us the offensive power we need to be a contender? I mean big, like Kessler, Vanek, Molson, etc. The changes I think that Don Maloney is alluding to is the core. Um, he talked about um, looking at whether or not this team needs to be younger, looking at the contracts that are currently here long term, and whether or not you know they need to see how this core is, the age of it, and whether or not it's conducive to keeping together. How do I interpret that? I think that that means that we could see a player that has been here a long time, that you know has, has um, worked himself into the core, leave. Is it going to be Shane Doan? No. Is it going to be Mike Smith? No. Is it going to be Oliver Ekman Larson? No. But could the rumors around Keith Yandel finally come to fruition? I think that's a possibility. I think the draft will be very interesting this year if the Coyotes don't make the playoffs. Um, they have that they have that second second round pick. I think that can be used. Um, to possibly net a big asset in a trade. I just think that then it's it's re-looking re at the defense, and maybe we see some young guys get an opportunity. Maybe Connor Murphy's ready next year. Maybe Brandon Gormley's ready next year. So maybe we see the departure of a Derek Morris, of a Keith Yandel. Um, you know, I really think that he Don Maloney is at the point now where if you put all his chips in the center with this team right now, and if it isn't enough, it's time to change the identity of this team. Now that ownership, in play, ownership is in place, now that they're gung-ho about spending money and bringing big names in, he has the wherewithal to do that. So I think that we could see some changes um, that we haven't seen in the past been made if they don't make the playoffs. Okay, moving right along here. No money for you. I thought that Gosby and LeBlanc weren't afraid to spend money. However, getting only one player, Erat, isn't enough uh, for the franchise for the outside looking in franchise. Uh, there are other players available, but the trigger wasn't pulled. Will we see bigger spending next year? You know, definitely. I, th I think, especially going into pre agency, we're going to see the Coyotes be active and be, um, you know, a suitor that maybe teams want to go to. I think what's important to note is that. Ownership was not holding the Coyotes back from making any deals yesterday. They had the approval from ownership. 
what happened was obviously once Maloney and his staff realized that the price tag for players like Vanek, like Wilson, like Hemsky had dropped, uh, he went and actually walked into Anthony LeBlanc's office and said, this is what we're thinking of. They dialed the executive committee on the phone and got approval within 10 minutes to make a deal for these types of players. So obviously, you know, they're supportive. They're not really worried about the budget then. Uh, talking to George Gosby earlier this week, he said, we are opportunity driven. We have a budget that the parameters were set at the beginning of the season, but there are exceptions and we are open to adding to that um, if the opportunity presents itself. And it did yesterday. They tried for that. It just was then Maloney pulling back and not wanting to sacrifice future picks for a player that they couldn't get guarantee would be here long term. So that's where the decision and the deal ultimately fell apart. Um, not playoff bound. ERAD isn't enough to get this team into the playoffs. According to the online poll, are you happy about the deal? Over 80% are not happy. Did this franchise just turn its back on fans? Um, I don't think so. I think it's frustrating and I definitely can sympathize with the, plan with the fans when you see what Vanek and Wilson went for. To me, that was startling as well, that the Coyotes didn't maybe necessarily feel the need to flip some picks for a player like that because I think that would have put them over the edge and I think they would have been serious contenders for that for those wild card spots. But I think the fact that they were even in the conversation makes them credible, shows that they're trying. Um, you know, you look at this track record that this ownership group has had since they've been in place. They've added a Mike Ribeiro. But whether or not you agree with him and his stats this season, he is a top caliber free agent, and he was at the time. Um, you know, you look at them trying to be aggressive at the trade deadline. They did get one deal done. Um, but the fact that they were in there, I think, shows that they care. And I think also by the fact that the Coyotes didn't throw in the towel at the deadline, they were buyers. Although they only had one purchase, they were buyers. Um, that kind of goes back to something Maloney told us yesterday, saying that we can't be credible to our fans and say that we want to win if we're not doing steps to do that and if we you know, sold off a bunch of pieces. So they're all in with this group right now, and I think that's all you kind of can ask for, even though it is frustrating that they weren't able to grab a bigger piece that was available. You know, maybe we see more um, bigger names and high-profile athletes come in in the summer when it's easier to kind of do that roster reconstruction. Um, but it wasn't for a lack of effort. The try was definitely there. Okay. Um, Art is pointing out behind me that my clock is a few minutes fast, so we still have some time. We're not going to shut the, shut the chat down just yet. I think we have a couple more questions to get to, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Um, David wants a couple questions from David. First of all, David's wondering um, my thoughts on keeping NHL players in the Olympics. Is it worth the risk in light of the John Tavares injury? As a fan, I would probably watch the Olympics regardless if it was pros or amateurs. I'm a big fan of the World Junior Tournament. It's some of the best hockey I've ever watched in my life. So I love watching younger athletes, amateur athletes compete. Can I say that about everyone else, just the random Joe that's going to turn on NBC um, you know, on, on a time when the game's on? Probably not. I think there is appeal of the NHL athletes in the Olympics. It's familiar names. It, you know, it gets you familiar with, with players that maybe you've heard in the NHL. Maybe you follow them back and start cheering for them more. So I think that publicity is key for the league. But like you said, the risk is there for injury. There's no immediate kickback that goes back to the teams. They don't see a, you know, a, a sudden shift in ticket sales necessarily. Even though there could be an indirect correlation, it's not money directly in their pocket and so I think it'll be interesting what the league decides there are other options there's a World Cup type tournament that we've had in the past maybe where it's the NHL is a little more involved and it's not traveling time zones away we could see alternatives um, emerge I'm a fan of it personally but I do understand the risks involved so I guess I'm kind of the one in the middle area on the fence I hope they still go I love watching the hockey. It's great stories coming back, but you can understand the logistics are tough sometimes. 
Another question from David. Um, do you feel ERAC could be the missing link for this team? And if they don't, what big changes could you see? We kind of touched on that. We'll have to give this time, um, you know, and see if they're able to, to get in. I think he will help. I think tonight, maybe kind of give a little pass tonight. We'll see. It's going to take some time. He skated today, but it was an optional skate. So he didn't even skate with his line mates. Um, but I think these first few games are going to be a feeling out process, trying to adjust and, and get into this system, but it's similar to Nashville. He should have an impact. He's on the books for next season, so really this is just kind of a primer for what we could see next year with him. Ahmad brings up a good point in that um, could this ERAT trade have happened earlier in the year with the, the talks of Klesla and Klesla going on waivers? I really think that was the intent of putting Klesla on waivers was to see if someone would grab his salary and then they could make this deal because as soon as it became known that ERAT wanted out, I think the Coyotes' interest was piqued. Um, why was Klesla key to this deal? Without, they couldn't have executed this deal if they didn't lose his salary. Um, that helped them keep um, and retain and add ERAT. If not, they would have exceeded their budget, and although they were willing to do that on the trade deadline day, Tuesday, to get this deal done, they had to keep it within the parameters. So, you know, it might have been different. Maybe this team would be in a better position if Erat had been here since November, but it wasn't until now, the deadline, that Washington was able to take Klesla. Lastly, we want the cup now. Wants to know, has, has GM, DM had any extension discussions with Grace? As far as I know, there have been no talks with any UFAs. We thought maybe maybe Bravado would 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 get back going again, but they have held true to their word. Uh, after not getting a deal done at training camp, they are not talking until the end of the season. The other UFAs I talked to, same thing. We're not negotiating during the season. We have too much to focus on right now. Those are off-season conversations. And it's difficult to see what Grice's market would be. Um, I think he's fulfilled a good backup role this year, but maybe someone else sees something more than him and offers him something more in free agency. We'll just have to see. But uh, Art, I think my clock is saying it's time to wrap this up. So thank you all for participating and watching. Um, I really enjoy this this conversation that we have every week, and it was a great, a great bunch of subjects today with the trade deadline. Um, next week, same normal time. We'll be talking at 2 p.m. on Wednesday. The Coyotes will be in the midst of that long East Coast road trip, so I'm sure we'll have lots to talk about then. But thank you, and we will see you next time.